So it really feels like the Flint water crisis is shaping up to be one of the biggest criminal conspiracies in the history of the United States. And I say this because no matter how much we learn, no matter how much is discovered about the criminality, the criminal negligence, and the cover-up attempts, we still continue to learn more. The plot continues to thicken. And thanks to the excellent investigative journalism of Jordan Sheridan and Charlie LeDuff in an article for The Guardian, now we're learning even more about how the wrongdoers, the criminals, after the, they left office, they essentially inexplicably got a pass by the new attorney general of Michigan, who's a Democrat, by the way. So the article reads, a team of prosecutors and investigators leading the investigation into the Flint water crisis from 2016 through 2018 were assembling a racketeering case against the architects of a bond deal that residents and experts say sparked the health disaster. Sources familiar with the criminal investigation have told The Guardian. The case, which would have come under RICO, racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations' laws, often used to charge organized crime groups, was widespread and set to implicate additional state officials who played a role in the poisoning of Flint, according to these sources. But when the team was suddenly broken up and the investigation restarted with a new set of investigators, the RICO case never materialized. What happened? Critics point to the Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel, running to replace the term-limited Republican Attorney General Bill Schuett in 20. 18, Nessel, a Democrat, criticized the Flint criminal investigation under Schuett as, quote, politically charged show trials and campaigned on revamping the investigation. Shortly after Nessel won the attorney general race and took office, her administration fired the top prosecutors and investigators working on the Schuett launched investigation and restarted the prosecution with a new team. At that point, the prosecution team assembled by Schuett had been working for nearly three years and filed criminal charges against 15 Michigan state and Flint city officials, including four officials charged with financial fraud that prosecutors said triggered the water crisis. But when Nessel relaunched the investigation, her office dropped charges against top state and city officials, citing flaws in the Shewitt era investigation. In 2021, Nessel's office recharged several of those defendants with a new round of indictments that included involuntary manslaughter, misconduct in office, obstruction of justice, extortion, and perjury. But gone were the financial fraud charges. So that's a little bit sus if you ask me people are saying here who were quoted in the article we don't know what happened she just let it go that's the quote she just let it go why why would you let this go this is a significant portion of the case and for you to let them off here i mean it doesn't make sense they should be hit with every possible thing so why would this not happen? We'll we'll get to that. There's there's a theory here, but just to kind of demonstrate how important this element of the investigation is, the disappearance of the financial fraud charges is significant because the bond deal that allowed the city of Flint to switch its water supply had been heavily investigated by the Shewitt era prosecution. In 2014, Flint needed to borrow nearly $100 million to join the proposed KWA Water Authority, a new regional system that Flint would join as both a customer and part owner. But at the time, Time, the city was broke and at its borrowing limit. Okay, so seems kind of important because this is at the center of this entire criminal conspiracy. So why is she choosing to not pursue a RICO case against them? Um, well, again, her motivations here are unclear, but this kind of stands out conspicuously so. Multiple sources familiar with the investigation noted that if the financial fraud or RICO charges had been filed, wait for it, the state of Michigan might have faced hundreds of millions in liability over the KWA bond deal. So are you choosing to let them off specifically because it would cost too much money for the state? Again, we don't know. But essentially, this can all be summarized with, uh, I think, a perfect tweet from Crystal Ball, who writes, political corruption poisoned Flynn and political corruption shielded the wrongdoers from accountability. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I just... I don't know what to say about the story. It keeps getting more bizarre. And at this point, I, I honestly don't know what to expect. Um, so I'll be bringing on Jordan Sheridan shortly. I believe next week, I think Tuesday. And he's going to talk a little bit more at length about this. The article itself is really long. I'll link to it down below. But just really interesting. I mean, again, things just continue to get more strange and bizarre in this twisted story. And I'm not alleging any criminal wrongdoing on Nestle's behalf. But for her to take issue with Shewitt's investigation. I mean, 
for her to accuse him of being politically motivated. He's a Republican investigating other Republicans. I think that at a minimum, we should assume a level of impartiality on his part. But she just she was really adamant about not pursuing the fraud charges and, and getting rid of Shewitt's entire team. It's bizarre. It doesn't make sense. So I think that maybe they should look into that a little bit further, what Nestle's motivations were, what the underlying reasoning was. Again, she could just be completely incompetent, but as it relates to Flint, uh, you know, if you look a little bit more, if you dig a little bit deeper, you might find something else there. So who knows what will be uncovered in the future, but all I know is, wow. I mean, I'm glad that there is at least an effort to bring justice to the people of Flint. You can never unpoison them, but just the fact that justice is being pursued and criminal charges have been filed, that's important. But I mean, still, the circumstances are so strange, so bizarre that I don't know how long it's going to take to get to the bottom of this. But wow, am I excited to find out what happens because this is insane and we need to know the details here so we can prevent this from ever happening again. And we have to give justice to the people of Flint. They should be paid reparations. All of their medical bills should be obviously eliminated. I mean, nobody should have medical bills in the United States, but certainly they shouldn't have any medical bills. And everything that was done to them to harm them has to be undone or addressed in some way. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep following the story. And yeah, look up for my um, interview with Jordan Sheridan coming soon.